How did Down East come together? A lot of people probably heard this story, but I, I know uh, my kids get me tired of me telling the story all the time. But I've never heard it. Let's okay. go. <laughs> so I'm uh, in the fire department. I've got my car lot, and I got my body shop, and uh, I'm, I have a. Of course, in the wintertime, I have a plow truck, so I'm plowing driveways, right? So uh, I'm listening to this radio story. It's about this new technology coming called cell phones. <laughs> And I'm thinking, wow. And I had a pager. And my pager started going off while this guy was telling the story about how these cell phones were going to be able to call from, re- remotely from anywhere. And I'm daydreaming about, wow, if I had a cell phone, then I could be doing more things, you know. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, when cell phones came out that uh, that spring, like this was in November, December or something like that. When well, what do you, what year? No, uh, 68, something like that there. 68. 68. Yeah, 60, 60, yeah, maybe 68 or something. So anyways, I, uh, in the spring when they come out, uh, I, uh, of course, I wanted to get a cell phone. So I called this guy. I knew that I had, uh, actually, it was one of the guys that I went to Toronto with, right? And uh, I said, just right how can I get one of these cell phones? Like, who, and he said, well, I'm selling them, but uh, he was a sales guy, right? So I said, well, how much it could it cost? He said, 3500 bucks. I said, oh, shit. I said, I can't afford that. How do you, you know, like... I said, how can I get a deal? He goes, nobody gets a deal no, unless you're a dealer. Oh, how do you become a dealer? <laughs> so that's how I became a dealer. <laughs> I'm a dealer, actually. <laughs> so I started selling cell phones, and uh, and uh, I started selling them out of my little car lot on the Bedford Highway. And then I met this guy that owned Down East, um, and he was going bankrupt, actually. He was going to leave. He's going to – he had, he just got paid for this um, – sale that he did and he was going to take the money and just leave the province and i said uh, well I said, he said, calls me up he said listen either you're buying me or i'm leaving and i just sold him a truck see so i said well i'll come out and take a look so i went out and um, he had this technician sitting at the bench i said what's this guy doing he said he's doing the repairs of them photo the phones i said who else is doing that he goes just me and i said there's a niche right i said okay maybe i will buy you so anyways i bought him and uh I remember I called Motorola and I said, look, I said, this guy owes you a whole bunch of money, like $85,000 or $90,000. I said, it's all unsecured. And uh, I'm looking at buying them, right? I'll, t- I'll take on the debt. But I said, uh, I want to make sure I keep the service center. And the guy says, well, we're going to close the service up. We're going to move it to Toronto. And, you know. I said, well, if you've done that, then you're going to lose $85,000 because I'm not going to buy the business. Guy said, well, we're not going to make any more service centers. I said, okay, see you later. I hung up. The guy called me back the next day. He says, yeah, he says, uh, yeah, we talked it over. And, uh, yeah, we'll let you keep uh, uh, the service. As long as you maintain a Motorola trained technician, we'll let you keep the service. Called his bluff. I says, yeah, okay. So I, I said, send me a letter. So he sent me a letter to that. And actually, I just found that letter a little while ago. No way. Yeah, it was some, some old paperwork. <clears throat> but anyway, so uh, the first thing I did is... Uh, after I got the letter and I set up the business, bought the business, I called up. This was in, this happened in March time frame, right? So I called up and I called this guy, Keith Steele, in Toronto. And I said, are you in Montreal? And I said, look, I said, I understand you do training for uh, technician for the Motorola. He goes, yeah. I said, well, can you can I get a couple guys in there? He said, well, yeah, we got a course going next week or something. He said, if you want to shoot up. I said, yeah, absolutely. So they had this technician that was working for me. He was doing it. He was, it wasn't really, he was an installer. What does that like? What does that mean? Install? He installed the phones in the cars. Oh, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got so you. I, I said to, uh, I said, listen. I said, uh, we're going to Toronto. He said, what? What for? I said, we're Montreal. I said, we're going to Montreal. He goes, what for? I said, we're going to write the course for uh, technicians. He goes, well, no, I said, I'm not ready for that. I said, well, me neither, but we're going. <laughs> and I said, I'm taking you so I can cheat off you. <laughs> so we went to Montreal and we wrote the course and. Uh, I got my papers for <laughs> fixing cell phones, right? So that way, nobody could take this. Nobody could take this uh, service center from me because I was a certified trained technician, and so nobody could take the service from me. I'm good. <laughs> right. How'd you cheat off him? Uh, he... Look over. You know, I cheated. This it wasn't that hard. I got through it. That's amazing. But again, no fear. He was scared to death, but I said, "No, nah, I'm not afraid. All right, let's do it. All right, we'll figure it away." And, what's uh, the, what's the saying to, to just do it first ask for forgiveness later yeah what, what is that yeah that's right that i is. love that saying yeah that's, it feels like that's your life yeah, somewhat yeah, that's right yeah, that's right it's easy to get forgiveness and permission i like yeah. that 
yeah, yeah, you just do it. And hey, listen, as long as you're doing, as long as you're not hurting anybody, you're doing stuff for the right reasons. People say, yeah, they say, okay, they'll let you get by. Okay, get out of here, right? Yeah. Kind of, kind of deal. So it was. Uh, Wow. That's the way I lived my life, yeah. And then you grew it to 50 stores, correct? 55. We had 55 stores, and it was, uh, you know, lots of good stories on the, uh, the stores. Because at, when, when I first got into business, anybody could become a dealer, right? You just had to apply for it, and you could become a dealer. You no barriers to entry. Go up to Montreal, do what you did. No, come. no. No, that was totally different. See, that was gave me the service center, but nobody else could get that, right? That differentiated differentiated me from everybody else because I was a service center, but anybody could be selling cell phones. Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, I got so you. So they set up a deal. I got you. And so, anyways, I I remortgaged my house. I did everything, put everything on the line again, and I built this little shop. And actually, I quit the fire department too. Here I am in the Halifax Fire Department career, fifteen years, and I quit the fire department. And start doing this business, right? And mortgage my house, mortgage everything to build this little shop. And then the day I'm going to do the grand opening, a guy sets up across the street with the Bell Network, same as me, right? And he's selling the exact same phones on the exact same network, only he's selling them cheaper than me because he has no overhead, right? He's just got paying like a thousand bucks a month rent. And I'm, you know, I got a yeah, building, I, know, I got I know, everything yeah. mortgaged. You know, what are you going to do, right? So what did you do? <laughs> so the first thing I did is I talked to my salespeople, and they said, well, what are we going to do? I said, look, first of all, people will pay more for a product, even if it's the same exact same product, from a knowledgeable, comfortable, confident salesperson, right? The, they don't mind paying that little extra because they know I can trust you, and I'm, you're going to be here tomorrow. These guys, other guys fly by night, and this guy's a fly by night guy. So okay. so anyway, so that was okay. I bullshitted that way through. So anyway, so... Um, uh, it was funny because I called the president of mobility and I said, uh, listen, I said, uh, well, well, what are you doing, man? I said, you know, I, I just mortgaged everything. I, d I did set this up and you set a dealer across the street. Are you kidding me? He goes, well, I didn't know they were going to do that. I said, well, how can you not know? You're the guy giving out the, ah, I didn't, anyways. So I sent him this little, my brother had sent me this uh, uh, article about investing in business. I guess he was trying to send me a message. He said, investing in business with no barriers to entry. You know, it's not a good thing to invest in, right? No barriers to entry. So, you know, I could have just said, well, I'm staying in the fire department. But anyways, I said, I'm going to fix this, right? So I sent him this article, and then uh, he called me back. He said, yeah, I, says, I, I read that. He says, makes a lot of sense. I said, yeah. I said, look, you know, if you're, gonna, if you're not going to have barriers to entry, then th you're going to have chaos out here because your customers are buying phones. They don't know who to buy them from. And he goes, yeah. He says, well, how, would you, how do you think we could fix it? I said, well, let's have territories, right? We'll have a territory that I'm in this territory and this is mine and somebody else is in another territory. He said, well, how do we do if um, if you're not getting the penetration that we need in that area? Then I said, uh, give me first right of refusal or, you know, you can uh, take the dealership away, put another dealer in. He goes, yeah. He said, okay, that'll work. He said, okay, I'll do it. So we set that up. And that just paved the way for me because then I could buy territories, Right. Because these other dealers, right? Because so they would have slick. a dealer so I could buy the dealers, right? Slick. And so I started doing that, right? Buying the dealers, and then I own those territories, and nobody else can come in. And for some reason, nobody believed in it as much as me because um, I just knew that everybody was going to have cell phones. And, and I knew that the connection between cell phones and computers and everything else, when that computer started coming out and everything else, I remember putting on my sign down the Beverly Highway. They were talk, used to talk about the information highway. What's that? Nobody, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's what really, what's that? Right? So I said, yeah, it starts here. So I put a big sign up, information highway starts here. So people come in like, nobody knew what it was. So it is what I'm calling it. It's I love it. Highway. So I started it on the information highway starts here. And the guy said, well, what's this information highway? I said, it's a communications. I said, you're going to be able to be able to take your cell phone. You're going to be able to talk to your uh, computers. You're going to be able to talk to your house. You're going to be able to turn your lights on. You're going to, I said, you're going to be able to drive cars with it. And, Oh wow, you know, but I mean, I could see all this stuff with this, uh, with the technology happening, right? But how, like, it was just like you, you had a dream, like yeah, how does just, you just, I just, just saw believed, it? I just believed in it, right? It was just I could see this was the uh, beginning, right? And um, I built the shit out of that. You know, we built that business, and then the best part was is that, uh, so I've got all these cell phone stores, right? And then uh, Stenter was a phone company had to, they used to buy phones together. 
and uh, Stenter broke up. So all the different phone companies were buying different places, like they were buying for themselves all of a sudden. So I, there was a window of opportunity, which I jumped on. I started doing because I was buying at the highest volume, so I could buy at a high volume and sell to the other dealers. Okay. So I started doing that, and then I got a call from the president of uh, mobility, and actually from the phone company. And he says, Mickey says, you know, he says, you could probably do this a lot better than us. He said, uh, so why don't we be partners? I said, absolutely. Let's do it. And I remember people saying, "What? Don't do that. Them guys are. They'll never be able to work with them." And I said, eh, "I can work with them, right?" And so uh, I set up this. I set up the distribution for cell phones in Atlantic Canada, and everybody that bought a, Bell, a phone from Mel, in Atlantic Canada from uh, Bell went through my warehouse. Let's so I go. touched every one of them. Every one of them. And then the the, the best how some of them were resistant and didn't want to buy from me and stuff like this because I'm a competitor, right? So I talked to the president, who was another president, then Carl was gone. But anyways, uh, they were saying, well, you know, we can't, we got to let the dealers buy from wherever ever they want to, you know. I said, well, you know, that's all good. But I said, here you are. You're signing a customer up to a three-year package, airtime package, and you're discounting the first time, discounting the phone to them, right? So he goes, yeah. I said, well, now. The phone, these guys are selling shit because they're not getting paid enough money. So you're, they're buying these phones that are lasting for a month or two or six, and then they're breaking. And then you've got a customer with a two-and-a-half-year contract that has no phone that's working. Now, should you realize when these guys' phones aren't working, you're not making any money because you get paid for your time? Oh, yeah. I said, so giving them a good quality phone that they can use their airtime on. Yeah. You know, this is what you got to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I never thought of that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I think you're right on that. I said, absolutely. It doesn't take a brain scientist yeah. to well, figure that out. Like you <laughs> when you're there in the moment, <laughs> when you're there in the moment, see, the thing is, people weren't seeing it the way I was seeing it, right? And uh, they said, yeah, yeah. So I said, I can, you know, we'll give, we'll <clears> discount <throat> the phones at my business. At, it was called AMP, right? So we'll discount the phones there to the to the dealers, and then um, they won't have because right now you're, you're what the dealer was doing is buying the phone for five hundred dollars, he was getting a three hundred dollar discount from the, but he had to wait for forty five days to get that. I uh. said we'll give it to the dealer right up front, so he's got he pays two hundred for the phone, you guys just subsidize me with it. Well, how will we track it? I said well it's got electronic serial numbers. You know which ones are sold, and you they tell you they sold them. You hook the phones up, right? And then you and I said, well, I'll trust them. And anyway, so that's what they did. They uh, so every phone went through my warehouse. And then uh, Motorola was. Uh, we were down in uh, San Francisco, and there was a big trade show. And I said to the, I had ran into the president of Motorola, and I said, uh, Mobility, yeah. right up in Motorola. And I said, Look, I said, uh, you guys are losing your lunch here, guys. He guys, what are you talking about? I said, Well, I want you to come with me for a second. So I took them up into the show, and this place is bigger than like foot it's football like a show fields, room. right? Okay. No, the big uh, uh, trade shows, right? Yeah. So I took them to the tra to the uh, where all the aftermarket parts were being sold, right? And I said, "You see all these aftermarket parts?" He goes, "Yeah." I said, "This is they're duplicating your product, right? So you guys aren't concentrating on parts." I said, "Someday cell phones are going to be free." Little did I know, they were free. So I said, someday, and the only way the dealers are going to be able to make money is by selling accessories. And selling good quality accessories will separate them. So you guys are not concentrating on your accessories. This is, you know, you're going to lose out. So I said, anyways, we went for a coffee and shot the shit. I get told more yeah, stuff yeah. that. Anyway, so uh, a few weeks later, I get a phone call. And uh, he called me up. He says, listen, Mick, he says, uh, we had a meeting when we come back. He says, and... We think you're right. So we're going to separate cellular from the accessories, make it two different divisions. He said, uh, we could probably use somebody in the Maritimes to help us sell the product and the accessories in the Maritimes. I said, well, I'm the guy. He goes, absolutely. Wow. I was the only one on the planet given ex exclusive rights to Motorola accessories. 
I was given that by Motorola because of a, of a reward for them guys doing that, right? That's incredible. So yeah. when you approached the owner of Motorola in San Francisco, did you know him beforehand? No, it wasn't the owner of Motorola. He was the president, the, the of, president sorry. of mobility, of the, or the mobile yeah. side of the business. Did you know him beforehand, or you just I, introduced I, yourself? I knew him. I'd, like, I didn't, yeah. We weren't buddies or nothing, but I had met him, met, yeah. met him before, yeah. Man, the confidence just to walk up and spread an idea like that. Well, That's, you believed, right? I believed, right? Well, it's the no Excellent. fear thing, too. Yeah. Like, a lot of people don't have that. Like, just... I'm just blown away a little bit. Like, you mortgage your home for a risk like that. Did you have a wife? At the, like, did you have a, kids or anything? Like, Yeah, I did, actually. And, uh, and you mortgaged? She... No, uh, not at that time I didn't. But I did <clears throat> get married, and I did have a divorce. And uh, um, it, actually, it was right around that time, actually. And then I met my current wife... Uh, just when I was getting into it, cause I remember she was saying, I was telling her I was going to buy this. Oh, geez, she shouldn't do that. This is, uh, I said, ah, I'm doing it anyways. So anyways, <laughs> uh, we've been together for over 30 years and we got, uh, we've got four kids wow. and, uh, it's, uh, my kids are working with me. They're all working with me. My, I've heard my youngest is with still my, my wife decided, to, uh, uh, nine years ago that she decided to have one more. So if we, uh. We got a little nine-year-old, so <laughs> keeping you busy, I'm sure. Yeah, man, I'm having a ball. Right? This is a, I'm living the life, man. Do you yeah. think uh, picking the right life partner has a big part to do with success? Because you're a busy man. Your your hours aren't nine to five. You're you're moving. You're grooving, and you need to have someone there that's yeah, okay you, with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, like I say, you. Um, I don't know why she stayed with me. She's far better looking than me, and uh, <laughs> has a lot more than I have. But she, uh, we, I, I think. The chemistry works, right? You know, and I think that uh, you know, as I said, I was married before and I got divorced, and there was no chemistry there; it just didn't work. And uh, I was working a lot at that time. Even then, I was working because I had the body shop and I had the car lot, and I had the I was in the fire department. When you're in the fire department, you're there for 24 hours, right? And then you get off, uh, you know, for 36. So then you're, then you go back again, and so you're. It's it's, it's a different dynamic then. Yeah. Is it bittersweet selling a company? You work so hard for it, and then you make a ton of money. But it seems like in order to grow something to fifty-five stores, you got to love it. But then selling it, yeah. Well, you know the guy, the president. Funny about that because the president uh, of uh, the phone company came to me. Says, "Hey, Mickey." He says, uh, "I remember." He says, uh, "Listen, we got to do one or one or two things." And I said, "What's that?" He goes, "So we can either buy you, or we're going to put you out of business." I said, "What?" <laughs> and why would you do that? And he said, well, you got too much market share and, you know, and so I took the high road. I said, well, I guess I'll sell. But I said, I want to make sure that things stay the same. My employees keep, oh, no, we'll keep everybody. We'll do all the stuff. So anyway, so we negotiated a price and I sold to him. But it wasn't because I wanted to. I thought I could, uh, I had a, a few other dealers that I was lined up to buy and stuff like this here. But anyway, I said, ah, I'll take the high road. Yeah. And uh, because they were going to put me out of business in a way, Bill was, uh, you could put the pressure on them or whatever because, you know, when somebody with that much market share, it's a, it's a threat, right? But, and then I uh, just went on to do other things, right? I didn't want to be a one-shot pony and always one-trick pony. I started yeah. doing other stuff. The moment the money was transferred into your account, did you have a level of happiness or did you stay level head? How, how, how did you feel when you saw the money into your account? Uh, you know, there's, I, I don't know, it's a mixed emotion, you know, it's, uh, it's always great to, you know, uh, get some security in your life and stuff like this, but I, you know, um, you know, I, I just like doing things, right, so, and, you know, something, <clears throat> I've never been afraid about surviving, you know, I always, I always knew I was going to do something, and I was never afraid about uh, being broke or anything else, and I'm still not, I mean, the thing is, I can always, I can always find something to do, right, I can always, and I don't live extravagantly that uh, you know like a lot of other people do and i'm not uh you know i'm very very fortunate to be in the position i am and i like you know i like uh, giving back to the community i do a lot of that and it's it's a uh, to a boy from fairview you know it's a uh, it's a great feeling to be able to give a little bit back you know you should teach a course on fear and how to manage it i think <laughs> it's like you know, you're not afraid to sleep on a park bench but that's the reason you're probably sleeping in a, a big house you know i think it's it correlates very well, you know, it, to well, me, at least listening to you, just meeting you for the first time. It's, know, it's funny how people are afraid of getting punched in the face. And, uh, you know, you can see my face. I got a broken nose and he punched a few right. times. <laughs> I used to be good looking. It's a badge of honor. Yeah, that's right. But, uh, you know, the thing is, is that, uh, 
if they say it doesn't kill you, it makes it makes you stronger, right? So, uh, so that's the way I approach life, and it's, uh, you know, I've made mistakes, I made more, and that's one thing I always try to encourage people about: don't be afraid to make mistakes because you learn from them. That's how you learn, right?